Alrighty, welcome back everyone. So now we're just making, we're continuing on to the startup circuit part. So this is just continuing on with our component calculations section. So the startup circuit, right? We'll just give a quick summary of what this goes, what, what this does. So this circuit controls the startup behavior of the circuit. And by circuit, I mean the actual chip, right? Our start is chosen based on the desired startup time. There is a trade-off between startup time and losses. So what I, what I mean by that is, so if you have a lower resistor value, then the current through it is going to be higher with the same voltage, right? And since we know that power is voltage times current, if you have a higher current, you're going to be dissipating more power across that resistor, right? So it makes sense. Um, however, with a higher current, you get a faster turn on, right? So that's like what it means by there's a trade-off between startup time and losses, right? So continuing on to my notes about R start and quickly, sorry, I want to make it clear which ones we're talking about. So R start is this resistor right up here that we are, um, this is the value we're selecting, right? So it's, it's actually an extremely large value, which makes sense given our input voltage range is like, this could be 375 volts across this resistor, right? So um, that's why we get such large values, right? And if you even look at this, Here's the equation, right? Um, so the VDD current under under voltage lockout conditions 100 microamps, right? Oh, it says so the current through R start at V bulk min must be higher than the VDD current under UVLO conditions. Okay, so what that kind of means is what that ultimately turns into is this equation right here. We have V bulk min. So hopefully this is familiar. We've covered V bulk min in several other videos. So we should know what V bulk min is. It's like 120 volts, which I even have down here. If you want to know how we got that number, I would suggest checking out some of the previous videos, specifically the bridge rectifier plus smoothing capacitor videos. Um, that's where I cover V bulk min. I think that's where it's first introduced, um, but it's mentioned several times throughout other videos. So V bulk min divided by R start equals 100 microamps. Pretty easy, right? Doing the math. We just, you know, math, it's simple. So we're looking at 1.2 mega ohms for our start. That's the max value, right? But then I say, that's so that's our max value because we need, um, the reason we the reason we have solved for this max value is because any, so anything larger than this will not um, meet our current requirement, our current conditions, right? Because it says we require 100 microamps. So anything greater than 1.2 mega ohms will will not give us uh, will give us a current that's lower than 100 microamps which is we can't and that's not acceptable right so um what i didn't say is choose r start to be 420 kilo ohms comprised of two 210 kilo ohms resistors in series and the reason we picked two 210 kilo ohm resistors in series is for safety conditions i.e say one uh, say a resistor fails and it fails short, shorted, i.e. so what basically what happens is if a resistor fails, it can turn into a short circuit. So it's basically it becomes a zero ohm resistor. And then you don't want that on your controller because that would just destroy the controller and then your whole power supply is, is gone. Uh, but worse than that, it could actually just cause it to malfunction. It could still be functioning, but functioning improperly and then blow up whatever you're charging or whatever you're supplying power to, which that is what you're trying to avoid with something like this. So uh, that's why we went with two of these and just make sure that it can handle the power dissipation that we're giving it. So going all the way up to the maximum conditions or V bulk max is 375. So divided by 210K whatever the power, whatever, whatever the power dissipation is, is given by 375 volts, um, make sure. So V squared over R, I don't know what, what are we looking at? Like 22 million or something, 20 million, uh, divided by, uh, 210 K. Um, just make sure that handles, it can handle the amount of power, right? So just source them properly. Um, and again, so any other tips with this? So like I just mentioned, like as far as other parameters, just to make sure it's, it, it, uh, it's power to sit, power rating is appropriate. Um, package size doesn't seem to be a big issue here because you can kind of put the circuit, all, it's going to be all the way up at the V bus line. So it's not like it's going to be interfering, like it's going to be tightly packed with the rest of your components. Because when we get to layout, you'll see there's going to be a lot of components that are tightly packed around this controller. Um, 
So we'll, we'll cover all that stuff. But yeah, this is definitely not one that needs to be close to the controller. So don't worry about it. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for the startup circuit. It's a pretty simple circuit. Um, so yeah, like I said, comment if you have any questions and I'll be sure to answer them. Either I can either, I'll make a whole dedicated video if the question is uh, like, you know, specific or in detail enough, um, or I'll just reply if, if that helps. Um, like I said, drop a like if um, you this video helped you out. Um, that really helps my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and then subscribe if you want to see stay up to date with the rest of the videos in this little EE project series that I'm doing. Um, or if you just want to see, I, I post a bunch of other electrical engineering related content on here. So if, if you want to see other electrical engineering related content as well, then I uh, then subscribe as well. So uh, thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.